Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 21 of the video series where I critique and process your image. In this episode, we're going to take a look at this image from Bob. Um, I just want to mention real quick at the end of the video, I'm just going to talk about a couple things about the series. I'm going to save it for the end so we could jump right into the image. Now, I love the composition. I think Bob did a great job. We we have this uh, kind of line of the stream and the reflection of the mountains going diagonally through the frame. And we have the receding line diagonal almost going sideways through the frame. Not quite diagonal, but you get the idea. So we have the mountains going downward like this and then upward in the reflection. So it's a nice natural line to lead you through the image. I think it's very well composed. The only small thing I want to mention is over here we have this kind of uh, bush or whatever kind of creeping into the shot and you want to try to avoid that that's not adding anything to the image now we could go into Photoshop and we could get rid of all these branches here if we wanted to but it's much easier when you're out there taking the picture is just frame it in such a way that this isn't in the shot uh, so uh, just really carefully look all the way to the left, all the way to the right, all the way up, and all the way down to make sure any nothing is creeping into the shot that is going to distract anyone's attention from the beautiful scenery that is contained in the scene. All right. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the time of day. I know it's, you know, I don't know what Bob's schedule was, if he could get out there right at first light or right, you know, at last light. But a lot of landscape images I see would be a thousand times better if the light was better and that you know like I said it, it, not all of us you know just have the luxury of being at a place right when the Sun is rising and things like that but this shot it looks to be a later morning shot it it would be a great scene and be much better if the light was better and if the uh, sky was a little bit more interesting so if this is near where you live Bob and you could go here often um, you know, this is a place you'd like to revisit and go off and, you know, and get different light, different weather conditions and different clouds in the sky and things like that. You could get dramatically different images and stand in this exact same spot if the light was different and the sky was different. So, um, so that's all I want to mention. A lot of times, too, I, you know, I see people's, not just this image, but all, people in general, you know, the landscape images would be much better if the light was just a little better. Now, what we're going to do with this image, though, and why I picked it, is we're going to replace the sky in Photoshop. And a lot of people hate when I do this, and um, they think I'm doing a disservice to the photographic community because I teach people how to do manipulations in Photoshop. You know, Photoshop's not going away. Uh, if I don't teach it, they're going to learn it anyway. If you don't like replacing a sky in an image then don't it's your image it's your image do what you want to your image it's your art you know express yourself artistically through your photography the way you want to do it but as a photography teacher i think i'm obligated to show people how to use photoshop or when it might be used in certain situations and i think in this situation it's something that that might be done now we're going to talk a little bit more more about that in a second. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I do want to talk about the camera settings. It was a full frame Nikon D750 and it's a 24 to 120 millimeter lens. It's an f4 lens all through the focus or the zoom range at 38 millimeters. So that's a little wider than our angle of view of our eyesight. We usually see around 50 millimeters. So it's really nicely composed. Uh, it's 1 250th of a second f20 ISO 400. Now, an F4 lens, I talk about every single episode. You, when you shoot a landscape, you'd like to be in that sweet spot of your lens. Two to four stops up from wide open. That's when your lens is at its sharpest. If you stop down too much beyond four stops, the lens will start suffering from lens diffraction. And just, you know, quite literally, it's not going to be as sharp. You will get more depth of field. But you'll get more than enough depth of field at f8 or f11 in this shot and still get a sharper picture front to back if you shot in your lens's sweet spot. So f20 stopped down a little too, bit too much. I'd much prefer you're at f11, f8, and your ISO is at 100. Uh, having the ISO 100, obviously on a landscape scene, usually you don't want to introduce any noise uh, in the scene. So you want as low as ISO as possible. So... F8 
ISO 100, you would have been able to handhold the shot and get a beautiful shot as well. And I think it would have been a little crisper, better uh, sharpness throughout the image, front to back. All right, so beyond that, now I mentioned we're going to send this to Photoshop. Now, a lot of photographers will do a lot of processing in Lightroom and then send the uh, image to Photoshop, replace the sky, and then find that their sky doesn't really match real well, and then they're trying to reprocess it for the sky. It's much, much better, in my opinion, to do minimal processing in Lightroom, replace the sky, then process the entire image with the new sky in Lightroom as though it was re a real scene. That way it does look a little bit more natural, um, in my opinion. I will do some things to the raw file, and the the couple things I'll do is I do lens corrections now. It's no big, you could do those later usually. But the two things that you can't do to any other iteration of the image, that you only could do this to the raw file, is white balance and camera profile. If I send this over to Photoshop and it creates a PSD file or sometimes a TIFF file, you're going to lose the ability to change the camera profile and you're going to lose the ability to change the white balance because it gets baked into those files. So you're better off doing it now. Now, a lot of times when um, I have a landscape and I couldn't get out there at the best light, meaning first light in the morning, usually in a scene like this, and sunset too would be very nice light. I found that if you change the white balance to cloudy, it tends to give you a little bit more of that morning light look. And I kind of like that look. So you could try shade too. That'll be a little stronger. All right. So we're, right now I'm going to put it back to a shot. Because the other thing you could do is a lot of times camera calibration, the profile. Now again, this will only be available on a RAW file. When I forget to mention that, people will say they don't have that and they're working on a JPEG. If you have a JPEG, your profile is going to say embedded. You can't change it. And this will be different for different model cameras, too. So your uh, Sony will have different things in here. But the main one I want to look at is landscape. Landscape usually enhances color and contrast. And you can see it did dramatically change the color and the contrast. I'm not so sure I like that, to tell you the truth. I mean, that's pretty much processed, isn't it? So I, um, I'm going to keep it at standard, I think. For now because I'm going to replace the sky then process the image later and I could process it so it gets it gets this look if I want that look but I'm going to keep that at standard so what I am going to do is go to the basic panel and change the white balance to cloudy just to give it that bit of warmth that I think it needs all right so at this point now I'm going to send it to Photoshop so I'm just going to right click on the image and I'm going to go down to edit in and edit in Adobe Photoshop. And when it opens up in Photoshop now, I took the liberty of already picking out a sky uh, using Adobe Stock. I love Adobe Stock. Um, you know, that's where you can just get stock images. And it's integrated in Photoshop. So you could buy something and it will just be in Photoshop then after you buy it. And you don't have to, um, you know, worry about downloading it, then installing it or anything like that. So you just go right here. I'm in the photography workspace, and you could click right here, and you could see the workspace is Essentials 3D. I'm in the photography workspace, so my workspace is laid out like this. And right here where it says Libraries, it should be the very first image is the sky. So I'm just going to double-click on that and open up that sky. So I have the sky image that I picked out for this shot. Some little tips. You want the sun to come from the same angle. And you can see the image is definitely brighter on the left. And over here, it appears that the sun, you see the image, it's hard to say whether, you know, where the sun is. I know it's not on the right because we got shade over here. So the sun is up over here towards the left, hitting these peaks and then it's shade below it. And it's hitting this bank perfectly. So the sun is similar. You also want to try the same focal length. You don't want to be zoomed in and just put these big old clouds here that are all zoomed in. It just won't look right. So it looks like a similar focal length. Now one thing you want to do, which I'm not going to do here because I really don't have time, is you want to make sure that the noise between the sky and the rest of the image are similar. This, as I look at this, there looks like there's more noise in the clouds than there are in the image. And it doesn't always look 
is good later. So try to get uh, do noise reduction, let's say, on the sky. Because I get see I get see noise here. I know you guys can on the video. It's been made clear to me that you can't. But there is noise here, and there really is no noise on his image at all. So that won't look quite right. But I'm going to run with it because we really don't have time in this video unless I make an hour-long video. So now I want to move the sky over to that other um, frame that has our image. So I'm going to get the Move tool, hit the V key on the keyboard. Now I'm going to go kind of fast through the Photoshop steps. The purpose of this video isn't necessarily to teach you how to use Photoshop in one video because that's impossible. Uh, it's just to give you an idea what you could do with Photoshop. I do have Photoshop training videos on YouTube. Uh, they're a little bit old though, so I'm going to be redoing them. I'm going to do a an in, kind of a beginning Photoshop series. I should start that within a week. It's going to be about 10 to 15 episodes, and it's going to teach you as a photographer pretty much everything you need to know to use or to get started in Photoshop. So look for those videos. That will be more in depth and tell you everything I'm doing a little more clearly and carefully. So I'm going to move this. I have the Move tool, which is right here. Hit the V key on the keyboard for the uh, keyboard shortcut. I'm just going to drag to that tab and then drop it on the image. So we have it on the image here and I can move it anywhere I want. So I'm going to move it something like like that right now. I could adjust this later so it's not a big deal. So I have that now there. So our step one is I'm going to replace the sky up here. Then I have to deal with the sky down here because it's being reflected. So step one we're replacing the sky up here. So we have it now moved on there, so we're going to turn it off by hitting this eyeball like I just did. We're going to make the background active by clicking on the background, so that's active. Now we want to select the sky, so I'm going to get a tool to do that. The quick select tool, hit W on your keyboard, it's right here. I don't think, the sky's pretty uniformly colored, so I think a better choice might be the magic wand tool, which is in that same cubby as the quick selection tool. So we're going to use the magic wand tool, and I'm going to click right on the sky. I have contiguous checked. That means if I click here, something that is a similar color down here won't be selected as well. So it has to be contiguous. So we're going to click right there. So we have a kind of a swath picked, but I want to add to it. I want to add what's up here. So I'm going to hold the shift key in. That will add to the selection, and I'm going to click there. I'm going to keep that shift key clicked in and click there and click there. Give me a better selection. So we have a decent selection now of the sky. We have a couple rogue pixels here. We'll get rid of that later. Okay, so we have the selection. Now what I want to, they used to call this refine edge. Now they call it select and mask. It's right here. You click here and you'll get this tool and you could better select um, you know, it's a decent selection. You can see even where this tree or bush creeped in. We have a nice selection around that. The mountain peaks look good. We're a little bit sketchy down here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to randomly turn radius up to a number and see if that helps. And you can see it's kind of getting rid of the mountains, so, so we can't go too high on radius. And I wish I could tell you that there were set numbers you could change the radius to or any of these sliders. There isn't. It's different from image to image. So we're going to click Smart Radius and see if that improves down here at all. It really didn't do anything. All right, so we're going to smooth out here by just a touch. Just make it a little smoother so we don't have any jagged edges. And we're going to feather it just a touch. That will help. You know, it's off in the distance, and there is some lens diffraction. So we feather it. It'll just be a slight feathering going around the mountain peak that will help make it look a little better. Contrast won't help in this one. That's if the sky was a very contrasted color to the rest of it. If you had a black building here and a blue sky, so there's a big difference contrast, that might help, but it isn't going to this case. Now we have an edge detection brush by default active. So what we could do is we could come in here with this brush. And we could paint in here. Okay. See if we could improve that at all. It improves slightly. Okay, right there. So, you know, tell you the truth, I spend a lot of time when I do selections in Photoshop, and um, I mean a lot of time. I labor over them because I guess I'm a perfectionist and I go overboard. 
For the sake of this video, though, and the time, I'm going to say it's okay, even though I, it really isn't, okay? But it's it's good enough. It is good. So we're going to click OK. We're going to output to a selection, and we're clicking OK. So now I have this selection of the bad sky. We want it, the good sky put in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on that layer with the sky, and we're going to make it active. Now you can see that that layer is active and turned on. Our selection is there. It came with us, more or less. Now what we're going to do is just add a layer mask. A layer mask will keep part of the image and reject the rest of the image. And what it's going to keep is the part that is selected. So the layer mask is right here. It's this rectangle with a circle in the middle. As soon as I click on that, we have a perfectly inserted sky. And it looks pretty good. A little edgy down in here, like I said. But that is something you still have to work in with those sliders, the radius sliders, and the edge selection or the edge detection brush to make sure that that would be a little better. But again, for the sake of this video, I think we're going to run with it. So beyond that little corner right there, it actually looks perfect. So now we have to deal with down here. Uh, obviously, these clouds would be reflecting in this water. So we have to figure out how we're going to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the image, the layer that contains the sky, and I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Command J. If you have a PC, you'd hit Control J, and you can see that we have now another layer that has that sky. It's just on top of the existing one. What we need to do is flip that upside down. You see everything's flipped upside down. The mountains are upside down, so the sky would be upside down. So to do that, we're going to go into free transform free transform mode by hitting command T if you have a PC that's control T and I'm just gonna right click inside the box here and I'm gonna go flip vertical so now it flipped it upside down it's right there so I'm gonna accept the transformation by clicking this check box then we're gonna get this move tool again by hitting the V key and then I'm just gonna move it down so it's down here covering the water okay all right it's down there covering the water of course it looks horrible right so what do we got to do well we got to modify this this layer uh, mask right here so we could delete the layer mask and start over I think we'll leave the layer mask there what we got to do what for those of you that don't really understand layer masks what you need to know is that black will block out anything in that layer and white's going to let anything in that layer through. So as you look at it, you can see where it was white, this layer is coming through where it's white. And where it's black, the layer is being blocked off. OK, so with that said now, right now I want to block it totally off. So I want to fill this mask completely with black. and the I mean, you could get a brush and just paint in black on the mask, but I think the faster, easiest way is with our color swatches here. You can see by default we have black and white. If you don't have the default black and white there, hit the D key on your keyboard. That'll get you the default colors of black and white. And then you want the black in the foreground. Just hit the X key on your keyboard, and that puts black in the foreground. Now, we just want to fill this entire mask with black. The fastest way to do that is hold the Alt or Option key in, that's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. And while you hold that in, hit the Delete key. And we just filled that mask totally with black. So now we're back here. And this layer is not being shown at all. It's not being allowed through. See? Totally blank, really. OK? Now we want to make a selection of just this water down here where that reflection would be. So we have to be on that layer that contains the water. That's our background layer. So we're going to click there. I'm going to get the magic wand tool again by hitting the W key on my keyboard. Again, it's right there. And we're going to do our best to do a selection. Now, this is a selection that's going to be very difficult to do and what you would probably want to spend a lot of time doing. Um, for the sake of this video, we're going to do it just kind of quick and dirty, all right? So it's not going to be perfect, and I just want to mention that ahead of time. So I'm going to click right here, and we have a selection. I just want to see something. I'm going to deselect that for a minute by hitting Command-D. You can see it's selected up in here. I didn't really want it to do that, but we'll see what we can do. So we're going to hit 
there and select again. It's still selected up in there. Now I want to add to it, so I'm going to hold the Shift key in and click there, and then click over here with that Shift key held in. Click there, click there, click there. Oops, selected way too much. So I'm going to step backwards by hitting Command Z, and we'll try to select here by hitting, hold that Shift key in. And see if we could get there. Okay, well, we have quite a bit selected. Let's see if we could get here. Okay, we have a little bit over over abundance selected here and here. But what we're going to do is we're going to click the Select and Mask up here. And we're going to refine this. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to give it a radius of four or five pixels. That's just telling uh, Photoshop how far out and in to look for the edge. And, it, you know, it sometimes, you know, it varies. And as I did it, you can see it pulled back quite a bit. But we'll see. And Smart Radius, you click on, see if it did anything. It really didn't. So we're just going to leave it off. Now, I'm um, not going to do any smoothing right now. I'm just going to take this edge detection brush and paint in here and try to better select this edge. And it's really not working very well, which I find a lot. So it's, I mean, what can you do? Okay. So. It seemed to select the bush and stuff decently, but pretty much nothing else too great. So we still have an issue here. We have an issue here. We'll take care of those in a minute. So what we're going to do now is I'm not going to do any smoothing or anything because it is pretty jagged in through here. And I'm not really, maybe I'll feather it just a touch. And I'm going to, I'll put it to a selection. So I'm going to click OK. So we have this selection now. Now we want to do is go to the layer, which is the top layer that contains that part of the image that we want to show through here. I'm going to click on the mask. Now remember, our mask is all black. We're blocking everything out. We just want this part to be white. And to do that, when white is your background swatch, with the selection active and you're on the layer mask, make sure you're on the mask and not clicked on the image. You want to be clicked on the mask. Hold the command key on, in. That's if you have a Mac. If you have a PC, it's the control key in and hit the delete key. And now you could see that we have sky there. Now it doesn't look very good at all, does it? So what we're going to do is stay clicked on that. We're going to deselect it by hitting command D. And then we're going to get a brush. So I'm going to hit the B key on the keyboard to get the brush. And we're going to be in normal mode with 100% opacity. And we're going to paint in black. And what we're going to do is we're on this. We're going to paint in there and paint in there to try to improve it. All right. Now it's kind of, you know, six of one, half a dozen the other. It It's okay. I mean, it's it's the as far as the selection. Now, it looks totally bad right now. I, I, I that I give you, but we do have. It's actually a decent selection in a way. All right. But what we're going to do is now we're clicked on the layer that contains the image, and we're going to bring the opacity down to make it look more like it belongs there. Now what we could do is click on this little chain that's between them, and then make sure we're on the image. We get the move tool, and you could actually. Uh, move it around. You can see how we're moving it to try to maybe match the sky a little better. Like that. You can see how this is there, that is there. So that looks maybe a little more a little more uh, natural. The other thing we might want to do is um, add an adjustment layer just to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to adjustments and we'll go to vibrance and we're just going to make sure now if i bring let's say saturation down it's going to do the entire image okay actually that looks pretty cool doesn't it but anyway uh, i digress what we want to do is just affect this so we're going to clip it to that layer by clicking right there and that clicked it clipped it to the layer 
I'm going to bring saturation down a little and maybe brightness down a little bit too. Again, we're going to clip that to the layer and we're going to bring brightness down just a touch. And it, you know, looks a little better. It's still nowhere near perfect, trust me. But for the sake of this video, it gives you an idea of what you need to do um, to make this work, to make it look halfway decent. Um, all right. So far, so good. We have the new sky, and that looks good. And then we have the reflection down here. Now, I want to bring it over and finish it off in Lightroom. Now, if I just save it as is, we have a lot of layers here. And this is good. If you're going to come back, if you anticipate that you may have to come back into Photoshop and manipulate one of these layers, you want to save it like this with all these layers. The drawback is it's going to be a very large file. If you have a lot of layers, sometimes these files can be several gigabytes in size. And if you have such a large file, not only does it take up a lot of disk space, but when you work with Lightroom, it tends to be sluggish. So you're better off if you're sure you're not going to come back in here and manipulate any of these layers to what they call flatten the image. And to do that, you go up to Layer, Flatten Image. And now we just have the one layer with the image. So that's good. Now it's going to be a smaller file and our Lightroom will work more effectively and efficiently. So we're just going to quit Photoshop. It's going to ask me to save it. We're going to click yes or just click save. And then it opened up in Lightroom now. So there's our original image and there's our image with the different sky. Okay. Now we're going to process this like we normally would. I'm going to go to the basic panel and I'm going to bring highlights down. And I'm going to open shadows up quite a bit. And you can see that the replacement down here, I mean, it isn't that bad. It's um, okay up by where the mountaintop is. And when I reduced opacity, that helped bring the ripples in. And it's a little edgy around this mountaintop right here. That could have been improved. And it definitely is edgy right in here. And a little bit right there. And the rest of it actually is pretty good. So just some little minor things, and you'd really have to use that um, that uh, edge detection brush to try to improve uh, it through here. All right, so that's that. I'm going to jump down to the tone curve, and I'm going to look at medium contrast, and I'm going to look at strong contrast. I like strong contrast for sure. Um, I'm going to double click on the whites to get a quick white point. And double clicks on the blacks to get a quick black point. I like that. Then I'm just going to bring vibrance up just a touch. It's very colorful image. Obviously, we don't have to worry about vibrance um, too much. I am going to add some clarity. Maybe a little less. OK, I like that. So far, it looks pretty good. Maybe. I want to come back in here. I think shadows are open just a little too much. I want to bring shadows down just a little bit. Like right about there. OK, that looks pretty good. A lot of nice depth. We have bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, then the sky. So it's, it gives a lot of, you know, that uh, feeling of depth to the image when we're really playing with the tonal values throughout the scene from front to back. So that looks pretty good. I like that. We're going to jump down to detail. Now I mentioned that the sky, you could see there's, hopefully you could see if your video resolution has more noise than the rest of the image. So we're just going to go to, like, I'm not going to get too fussy with noise reduction here. Uh, noise reduction should have probably been ran again on the sky before we sent it over and copied it over to the layer that can contain the mountains. So we'll go with that. It looks decent. We're going to bring sharpening up to around 60. We're going to mask it away from the sky by holding the shift key in and or I'm sorry, hold the alter option key in. Sorry. My cat jumped on my lap right when I said that and was saying that. So it kind of distracted me. I apologize. Um, OK, so we have the masking up and I think it looks pretty good. So we're going to take uh, effects. We're going to put a slight vignette on it, just a slight, like minus 14. And 
I think we're done. All right. So here is the original image that all we did to it was change the white balance to cloudy and we did lens corrections. And here is our processed image where we replaced the sky. And we could compare the two by hitting the C key and close all those down. And there's the original and there's our processed image. So that's how you would go about doing it. Now, as you look at it here, I'll zoom in. Um, you can see it's a little edgy in here, right in here. That could get improved. Otherwise, it's not too bad there. I think over in here I saw, yeah, right in here, it's a little edgy. That could get improved. And the rest of it actually isn't bad. Maybe a touch right in there. So it gives you an idea what you need to do and how you would go about doing it. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Bob for sending me the image and allowing me to totally destroy his image. Uh, but thank you very much. Now, I hope that helped. I know a lot of you don't like Photoshop, but it's really a skill you probably should learn how to use. And uh, one thing I want to mention real quick about the series in general, I, I kind of, I really like, everyone has different opinions about, you know, they'll, they like it this way, they like something different or whatever. Because my whole goal of teaching photography is I don't really want to teach you how I do it necessarily. I want to just give you the knowledge so you know how to use the tools so you could express yourself the way you need to be expressed, the way you need to express yourself through your photography. So all I want to do is teach you how to use those tools. And the only way I really could teach you how to use the tools is by doing it my way and you know processing it the way I would process it and the way I like it processed. So that's fine. You, you could you know offer a different opinion on how you would do it. I sometimes take when I have time, I, I take the time when people say, they'll put a comment like, um, it, you made it too green. And all I'll do is correct them and say, in your opinion, I made it too green. Because there's no absolutes in this. And it's not objective. It's all subjective. So whatever works for you should be the you know what governs you and how you should do it. So that's why I, I encourage everyone to Tell me where you like different, you know, about that I did that you might not like, that you might like it a different way. But I just want to keep it clear that that is your opinion and this is my opinion and nobody is right. It's just the way we prefer to do it uh, or we prefer our images to be portrayed. The other thing, though, I just want to mark, uh, mention real quick is a lot of times people will say, um, especially about the dark parts of my images, they say that I make them too bright. And I don't know if you're working with a calibrated monitor or not, but it's very important if you really want to get serious in photography and, and really want your prints to be perfect and you want to sell prints and you want to be world famous, is that you have a calibrated monitor. Uh, if your monitor is not calibrated, we as humans, for some reason, we tend to keep our monitors really bright. And when we have our monitors really bright, the first thing that I hear from people that get their monitor calibrated is it's way darker. And they'll say to me, I think my calibration, you know, whatever I used widget is bad because my monitor is so dark. Well, that is true. It's going to be darker. And you'll find, though, because it's darker, when you print it, your print will look exactly like that. If you have your monitor very bright, not calibrated, you, you'll find that your prints will be very dark because you're, you're not calibrated. You're just, your monitor's way too bright. So a lot of times people will say that your shadows are opened up way too much. They're too bright. Well, it might be, maybe for your taste, they're too open too much, but it may be because your monitor is too bright and you really should look into getting your monitor calibrated. Now, I do have a video on how to calibrate a monitor and I'll link it below in case you're interested in seeing that. And um, consider it. A lot of times, too, people say that the color is different or color is off. Again, that comes down a lot of times to monitor calibration 
make sure your monitor is calibrated so you're seeing blue is blue and yellow is yellow and stuff like that, all right? So that's it for this episode. Thank you again, Bob. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.